Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's a real pleasure. Exciting uh, times. The big movie's about to open up. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Yeah. I'm really excited. Uh, and uh, are you fairly new to making major motion pictures? This major, yes. Very, very new to making this major film picture type thing. No, I, I, mean, I was in War Horse, which was quite a big film, um, but not with as big a role. So, yeah, I'm very excited. When, about as, a, as a kid, I don't know how yeah. old you are now, but as a I'm kid. Still a kid, Dave. Still a kid. At heart, yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, but you yeah, had to uh, begin auditioning and going out to, for uh, movie parts and stuff. Uh, uh, memories of that? Yeah, I mean, well, I, you know, like any actor, when you start out, you're, you're very, very lucky to get in the door. And the first door I got in, one of the first doors I got in, was for a computer game. To play computer James, game? Yeah, yeah, it was to play James Bond. And uh, <laughs> so I thought, well, great, you know, I got a shot at one of those sort of great British iconic movie sure. heroes. And uh, so I sort of went along. And uh, I, when I got to the audition, there were men in their sort of late 40s in full DJ wear, like, rather like I am tonight, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I overdressed a bit, but I, out of respect no, to you. you. Well, thank you very much. And I'm not at all. Say, not look, at all. You look great. I wish more people would take a hint from you. I agree. It's just <laughs> people are sloppy. What can you do? Jack Hanna never even <laughs> took his hat off. I know, that guy, seriously. I, I mean, you know, if I'm going to come on with a lizard, I, I, this is how I'd like to dress. <laughs> you know? That was amazing. Anyway, um, so you're auditioning, guys in their suits in their 40s. Yeah, and I, so I go in sort of in casual wear, and uh, I get into the room, I thought, wow, well, I'll shake it up, I'll do, uh, you know, because I thought it, there's going to be lots of movement and action because it's a mm. Bond character. So I started to throw myself around the, the room and dive over sofas and do lots of kind of <laughs> Walter PPK type poses, and that's not a euphemism. Um, <laughs> Uh, and um, I didn't get a call. I'm still waiting. So yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't work out well. Now, the video game were they going to use your, your likeness as well as your voice, or just your voice? I think in that instance they probably would have used the whole package. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and now to heck, who needs those people, right? I didn't say that. No. People I'm make gonna, a I'm good gonna, living gonna, out of that. We'll show you some uh, photos, and, and you okay. tell us everything we need to know about these photos. Okay. Right? okay. Let's okay. put Where up the first that, one that right one there at the All thing. Right. Yeah. Now what is that? What's What's going on there? Well, that was me and Mr. Hannah backstage earlier. <laughs> uh, and uh, what, I, what, I, what I failed to do was, was he could train his otter. He, uh, no one could train me as well as an otter. So there's <laughs> a massive discrepancy. The otter, correctly, has its things steepled underneath <laughs> yes. its chin, whereas I have it above my chin in front of my mouth. So, uh -huh. um, All right, let's this is a shot number two. Explain this one. No, this, this, was, this was What's better. We, we, we'd rehearsed this one. We had a bit more time to both get into character. So, um, what, it, what, is that an otter? Is that what we're looking at? It's an otter. Yeah. Oh, darn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there's the one, one on the left. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, yeah. He flossed that that morning. Look, he's got proper Hollywood teeth. That otter. <laughs> Uh, to tell us about you, you and was it you and a buddy went to, to Nepal? Were hiking, trekking through Nepal? I was teaching there, but we went. Teach, I was teaching, teaching actually in India. Oh yeah, my God! Yeah. What a wonderful experience! It was an incredible experience in a Tibetan Buddhist monastery um, and in, a, in a, the exiled Tibetan community that, that live in sort of uh, that part of. Now, uh, now how did this come to you? Why did you want to do this? How did it happen? It's incredible. A woman came to speak to me at my school, and I was really inspired by it. And uh, in England, sometimes if you're lucky enough, like I was, to have the option, you can take a year between school and going to university. Yeah. And I decided to take uh, a gap year as they call it and go to India and teach um, in this community it just it, her talk fascinated me and that that alone was an amazing experience and then we had a we had a bit of a break and a holiday so we went off trekking didn't have much money didn't have a guide really didn't have a clue and uh, <laughs> there were four of us then three then two because the other two got um, uh, altitude sickness I started to get altitude sickness um, with the last remaining friend what, do you Adam. remember what the elevation is you're talking about here? I, I can't know and it wasn't spectacular we just did it too quickly and you really need to you need yes. to take your acclimate. time and do it properly yeah, yeah acclimate and uh, I didn't and I had crazy hallucinations and realized that I was in trouble really actual hallucinations from the altitude sickness. yeah what, yeah what sort of things visually you were seeing things well yeah like sort of um, I, I, I had this whole hallucination that somebody had come in and stolen stuff from us and then I went outside and there were these stars and uh, they were sort of started exploding like fireworks it turned out a new group had actually arrived that night in the lodge where I slept and mm -hmm. they didn't steal anything but they did think our possessions were there so it was like it was reality mixing with Crazy. paranoia yeah, yeah it was so and, and now, now when you spend time at altitude does that do it brain damage or is it just a temporary <laughs> no, no I, I've been I've wondered about this myself I, I'm not trying to be uh, cheeky here I'm just let the good people be the judge <laughs> uh, I <laughs> set myself up for that <laughs>
But now, uh, one hopes that uh, yeah. you and your teaching experience uh, made a difference for somebody in, in those classes. I doubt uh, it. I wasn't a very good teacher. <laughs> no, I think I was more of a, to be fair to them, they taught me a hell of a lot more than I could ever, okay. ever teach them in yeah. return. But I think it was a, a, a fantastic cultural exchange. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think you're probably uh, being modest about this. I'm sure some part of that experience benefited those kids for the rest of their lives. Well, I hope so. I hope so. And it might be a kick if, you know, if not one of them now is sort of going, oh, sir, sir, he in big film. I mean, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. I hope they'll speak better English than that by now. Otherwise, my... <laughs> Now let's, uh, you're in the big uh, Star Wars uh, film, uh, the uh, Star Wars Star Trek. <laughs> breaking news, Bre breaking news. You, you heard it here Star first Wars, on, on David's show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's changeable. Uh, into Darkness, uh, and it opens uh, May 16th. Now, tell us about the character in, in this. There's a, a bit of mystery here, is there not? He, or or well, a bit of secrecy. He is basically a, a one-man weapon of mass destruction. His name is John Harrison, and he's a, he's a terrorist. And uh, he has good reason, and you'll, you'll see what that is in the film. Good reason for him? A justifiable... A justifiable mm -hmm. cause, exactly. Mm -hmm. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom. And is spiders. he somebody that we know from the uh, uh, Star Trek films? He's someone that you will get to know in this film, mm -hmm. and I can't wait for people to discover who he is and what he does and why oh, he so does Oh, so there will be does. a discovery unveiled in the film? Of... <laughs> What I do in the film, yes. Yes. <laughs> and the identity of uh, your character is John Harrison. Right. <laughs> He's a terrorist. I thought I just said, did I yes. just say this? I think I've got altitude sickness again. Okay. I'm hallucinating. Let's, <laughs> let's take a look at this uh, in, Into Darkness. That's a clip here. Do you know what we're going to see? No. Okay. It's going to be fun. Take a look. <laughs> All I can say is... That was... Your legs are like... Right. Yeah. That was, that was uh, a big that, split. Is I that was, 3D? Because I'm I, telling you, no offense to the rest of the cast, but you really don't need much more than you. <laughs> I mean, honest to God. Wow. That's very sweet. Uh, I, don't, I don't do such good high kicks. Oh, uh, you're fine. Clip. Benedict <laughs> Cumberbatch, ladies and gentlemen, Star Trek Into Darkness. Pleasure to meet you. Good luck to you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope you come back. You. That's it. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Now, stay tuned for Craig Ferguson. This is Alan Calder speaking.